Studio. I'm Jeffrey Brown, continuing our coverage here. And now I'm joined by Ann Patchett, author, novelist, and writer most recently of This is the Story of a Happy Marriage. Yeah. And also, we want to talk about your role in uh, running Parnassus Bookstore in Nashville. But first, welcome to you. Thank you very much. The, Glad to be here. The, 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 the book, because we talked about this once before, I remember is ab you, you telling me it's about you being a young person learning not just to be a writer, but to make a living as right, a writer. Right, right. Yeah? That's part of it. It's a collection of essays, so it's about a bunch of different things, um, but things that I'm committed to, things that I feel married to. So a big part of it is about writing mm -hmm. and just the work of being a writer, which I've been doing my whole life. And something you realized as a young person. Yeah, yeah, probably when I was five. I was out to dinner. When you were five? Yeah, I was out to dinner with somebody the other night, and they said, when did you want to be a writer? And I yeah. thought, it really was when I was a little kid. If I had been on your show, had you had the good sense to ask me to be on yes, your show yes. when I was five and yeah. you had not been born, I, <laughs> um, I would have said... I was six at the time. Yeah, right. It would have right. Been. <laughs> <laughs> I would have told you that I wanted to be a writer. Yeah. Do you, know, do you remember what it was that, uh, what were you reading or what was motivating that? You know, honestly, I started first grade in 1969, which was a great year for truancy. We didn't go to school a lot in the 60s. I, my parents moved around. Mm -hmm. We just, uh, we didn't get a lot done. Mm -hmm. And I didn't learn how to comfortably read and write mm -hmm. until I was in third grade. Yeah. So I really think that when I said to people when I was a little kid, I want to be a writer, what I was really saying is I'd really like to learn how to write. But in the essays, you're also writing about a little later period where... A okay, little later than being five? Yes. Yes. <laughs> but I, I'm, okay, I'm just moving up in time here. Okay. But when you, yes, you're a writer, but yeah. you also have to learn to make a living. Yes. Yeah, that was a because big... Because it's one thing to write. Right. It's another thing to, okay, how do I survive? So I got out of graduate school. I wanted to be a fiction writer. I wanted to write novels. I was very serious. I was very literary. I wasn't going to compromise my standards, mm -hmm. which meant I wasn't going to make a living. Mm -hmm. So at first, I tried to make a living as a teacher. And the problem with making a living as a teacher is your head's just full of other people's stories all day long, so you get home and you don't want to write. Mm -hmm. Then I decided I would be a waitress. So I left right. teaching college, I became a waitress, and my head was full of stories, I had great ideas, but then I'd get home and I would just fall flat on my face and go to sleep because right. I was so tired. Right. So then my I third- I remember those years yeah. myself. <laughs> it, had, it had some pleasures to it, I yeah. recall, because you'd yeah. be done at the end of the day. And you got cash. And you had cash. I loved cash that. Cash on hand. Cash. I, I do remember that. Yes, yes. yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So it has a certain fairy story quality, you know, yeah. while I tried this job that didn't work. But right. the third the third bowl of porridge that I got yeah. was freelance writing. Yeah. And I started writing for magazines. Yeah. I wrote for 17 Bridal Guide. I did fashion magazines. I wrote, I wrote a lot of junk for a long time. Yeah. And that was a great way to make a living so that then I could work on my serious novels. Well, so um, what do you tell people now when they, when they ask that, that question that you're asked all the time is sort of, how do I become, I guess, you? How do you become me? Yeah. Um, I think you just want to do it so much. Mm -hmm. And that was the thing that I really learned when I was waitressing. I had this moment that I thought, it, would it be OK if you were a waitress for the rest of your life and you wrote because you loved it, and mm -hmm. and you couldn't imagine doing anything else. And assuming I thought, assuming you had the strength. At the end assuming of the night. you had the strength to but, type but, at the yeah, end of the day. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, I really could do that. If I never got published, if nothing worked out, I write because I love to write, mm -hmm. and it has worked out, and it's been a great job. But I do think that you have to have that commitment of loving the work. The, the other theme of the essays is is writing itself. Now, the fiction that you write. Can we say it's less personal because you're not the, you're right. not a character? Oh, exactly. Right? Yeah. These essays are about you. Right. Right. Is that different for you? Do you like one over the other? I'm a fiction writer. Yeah. Um, I, no, I find nonfiction really easy and really fun, but I sort of feel like I'm cheating. Uh, I love. Really? I mean, it just I comes out too yeah. easily. Yeah. Yeah. And and so why am I not a nonfiction writer? Wouldn't yeah. that make more sense? Yeah, why do have a, Why a do I gravitate? Life towards what's harder. I have a very happy life. Yeah, I'm a yeah. happy person. Yeah. Yeah. But 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 what but the the fiction comes The fiction's tough because yeah. you know with fiction you've got to do everything. You've got to mm. make the trees and all the leaves and you've got to make the sun come up and you've mm -hmm. got to figure out who's going to live and who's going to die. In nonfiction you find the story but the story is already there. You've mm -hmm. got the characters, you've yes. got the timeline, you've got the parameters yeah. and then you write it up. 
Uh, tell me about your other hat uh, as, as book owner. Because I mean, it's a little funny to sit here in Miami in the book fair, surrounded by thousands of book lovers, right. and say, oh, the book industry is falling apart, right? There's no <laughs> readers, and there's no, nobody's buying or reading books anymore. And yet it is still. Well, you know, books are fun. Books people, are fun. People are buying yeah. books, and they're reading yeah. books. I, with my partner, Karen Hayes, yeah. uh, own Parnassus Books in yeah. Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. And we're doing great. You know, yeah. we're 3,000 square feet. I think that maybe the day of the 30,000 square foot megastore is dead. Yeah. But people still really want a terrific, well curated bookstore. Books and Books in Miami. Yeah. Fabulous yeah, bookstore. Yeah, we talked to Mitchell Kaplan earlier. Yeah. Mitchell's, Mitchell is, yeah. is really such a role model. But for what, us. Is, what is it? The, what is the model, or what is it that people have come to realize works? Because for many, I mean, after all, we did lose a lot of independent bookstores. We right? lost a lot of independent bookstores, but I don't think it was the fault of the booksellers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't think it's like they did something wrong and now we're doing something right. Mm -hmm. I think it's mm -hmm. a cycle. You know, the little independents did a great job and then they got bigger. And then somebody said, we can make a ton of money in this. Let's bring in Barnes and Nobles. Let's bring in Borders. Let's, mm -hmm. let's have a superstore. And then Amazon came up and said, now we're going to kill the superstore. Then we got all the way to Amazon, and you've lost your community. You've yeah. lost your story hour, your book readings, your author signings, your place to hang out. And people are starting to go, God, you know, what I miss is that little neighborhood community bookstore. Right, right. And, and so I ask, opened one of those. you can ask the person, what should I read And next, I remember or, what you yeah. read. You can tell me what you just read and loved, and I'll yeah. be able to say, this is what you should read next. Yeah. Do you see uh, um, changes in what people are buying and what they're reading? in the years you've been doing this? Uh, well, I've only been doing it for three years. Yeah, okay, and, well, in those um, three years. <laughs> in those three years, I gotta tell you, because I'm an author and I don't work in the store yeah. and I come in and it's a big deal, people buy what I tell them to buy. Yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> I walk in and somebody says, what, what, do you, what should I buy? And I say, here. You should buy Hector Tobar's well, Deep Down oh, Dark. All oh, right. <laughs> well, actually, I'm going to be talking to him later. Oh, that's my favorite I, book of the year. I started reading it. It's my a terrific book. My favorite book of the year. Okay. Well, it's our last minute. So okay. Give, so I'm coming into the bookstore. Ann Patchett, what should, what should I read? Roz Chast. Can't we talk about something more pleasant? Yeah. Ah, I mean, that's an astonishing book. Yes. Uh, Myra Coleman's My Favorite Things. Mm -hmm. I, th the idea of finding books with pictures is really exciting for me. Mm -hmm. Station Eleven, are you going to interview Emily St. John mm -hmm. Mandel? That's yeah. a terrific book. Lila, Marilyn Robinson, yeah. the third of her Gilead trilogy. Right. But you don't have to have read the other two to enjoy mm -hmm. Lila. Lila's my favorite of the three. Um, and then, you know, there are also so many great books that maybe you miss. That's the best thing about having a bookstore. I love Act One by Moss Hart. So I can, I can sell Act One all day really? long. Really? You just can't believe it. Wow. And people think I'm a genius. You know, they come back and they're like, how have I lived all these years without Moss Hart? Um, right. <laughs> and, and hold on to your wallet if you walk into Parnassus <laughs> Bookstore, apparently. All right, Ann Patchett, thanks so it's much. It's been great seeing you, Jeff. Thank you. Miami Book Fair International is brought to you by the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation in association with PBS Digital Studios. I just challenge you to go through the book fair and not find something that you're interested in. One of the things I love about the book fair is it is a cornucopia of opportunity. You can literally find any kind of literary discipline you're interested in. You can see your favorite author. You can see somebody you've never heard of. But when they all get together, there's a synergy that begins to happen. Knight Foundation, proud sponsor of PBS's coverage of the Miami Book Fair International.